Welcome to the latest edition of Fundamentals. This time, I'm going to look at one of the most popular funds on the AJ Bell Invest Center platform right now, namely Troy Trojan Income. The fund's mandate is to provide an above average income with the potential for capital growth in the medium term. The bulk of the assets are to be invested in UK and overseas equities and fixed interest securities, although the focus seems to be mainly on UK listed shares. Some 90% of the £3.2 billion collector's assets are currently invested in equities, with 6% in cash. By geography, just under 90% of the portfolio is found here in Britain, with 11% in the US and nearly 2% in Europe. The fund offers a concentrated, high-conviction portfolio of just 42 holdings, and the top 10 cover just over a third of the total assets. The five biggest individual holdings are consumer staples giant Unilever, oil giant Shell, drug firm Glaxo, tobacco specialist Imperial Brands, and support services company Compass. They're all FTSE 100 stocks, and that gives you a clue to the nature of the portfolio. Solid, no frills, a focus on quality and, of course, income. As you can see here, just under half of the market of the portfolio is invested in mega caps, just 30, under 30% 30 in large caps, 17% in mid caps, and only 6% in riskier smaller names. This next graphic shows the sector exposures, consumer staples, financials, and utilities top the list, while technology is hardly present and basic materials has no weighting at all. Something which may be hurting short-term performance, it should be said, as the top six performers over the FTSE 100 over the past year are all miners. Now the fund's eligible for SIPs, ICES and dealing accounts and currently comes with a yield of 3.8%. Dividends are paid semi-annually. The ongoing charge figure is 1.02% and for those who set store by such things, the fund comes with a five-star ranking from Morningstar. As a final point, the fund offers accumulation and income units. So they're the mechanics. The question is, why are advisors and clients buying right now? And I think there are three possible reasons. The first is that 3.8% yield. Yes, markets have got all excited about the Trump trade and the president's plans to revive growth, but central banks are hardly galloping to raise interest rates. The Bank of England, Bank of Japan and US Federal Reserve all stood pat in late January and early February. In addition, bond yields are still low, even after their backup since last summer. As I sit here, the UK 10-year gilt yields just 1.35%, lower than it was a year ago, as we can see here. Second, advisors and clients are not just looking for income, but reliable income. And this is what the portfolio of Troy Trojan Income suggests it's designed to provide. Yes, it may have missed the mining rally of the last 12 months, but a three-year beta of 0.77 and a three-year sharp ratio of 1.19 suggests that low volatility and medium to long-term outperformance are the aims of the game here. This final graphic shows performance since inception in 2004. As you can see, it's been pretty steady, which may appeal to many patient clients. Third, of course, there's no guarantee the Trump trade's going to go according to plan. The president's immigration policy is already meeting opposition in the courts, and in theory the Supreme Court can block any executive order, while the Senate and House of Representatives could also put a spanner in the works if they so choose. Clients who don't want to take the risk of chasing near-term performance or the Trump trade may like Troy Trojan Income's steadier approach, but also welcoming the presence of names like Lloyds and BP in the top 10 list, as they offer both income and potential capital upside, as they could be said to be value picks which may benefit from any cyclical turnaround. There are risks, of course. The fund did dip during the peak of the financial crisis, and it is likely to underperform when animal spirits are running and cyclical names like miners are doing well. In addition, FTSE 100 dividend cover is thinner than ideal, at 1.7 times for this year, based on aggregate consensus forecasts, when it really should be above two. So buyers will be relying on the skill and experience of fund manager Francis Brook, to pick the right names and dodge potential dividend cutters. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.